Welcome back everybody. This video and the next video are going to be two very simple conceptual videos before we dive into some more details of C++. Throughout this series, we're going to take advantage of functions. And I want you guys to understand after this video and the next one, what a function is, how it works, how to call them, what they're for, and a little bit on how to create our own functions. Later on in the series, we're going to readdress functions, deep dive how to create them and all that good stuff. But for now, I just want you guys to understand the basics. So I don't wanna waste your time, so let's just get started. But first, please consider checking out our sponsor, Embarcadero, who offers the C++ Builder. C++ Builder is the tool you need if you want all the tools to get started with C++ development. This is an IDE, meaning you can code inside the application, you can execute your code, and with this tool you can deploy to iOS, macOS, Windows, and Android. That's right, so from one single C++ code base, you can deploy your application to four different platforms, and you can make beautiful UIs for all of those platforms. This isn't some hacky tool where it emulates the code, this is deploying natively to these platforms with UIs that fit perfectly for these platforms, optimized for performance, perfection, and overall just a really great application to deploy. That's just one of the few things I've been focusing on with C++ Builder, but there's so much more, so check out the site, link in the description. All right, so let's talk a little bit about calling functions. First thing you should know about is the main function, right? We start with the main function. This is the function that gets called automatically. When we type inside of the main function, we're defining that function, we're not calling it. The main function is called when the program is executed. So that is a little bit more on the creating function side. We're talking about calling functions, executing functions, using them for our own benefit. There are a lot of functions that are already created for our use, so we don't have to recreate the wheel over and over and over again. When you call a function, you say the function name, such as pow for power, and then you put parentheses. Now sometimes you'll have empty parentheses like so, other times you'll put data in there or you'll pass data in there is the official technical term. The data that you pass in there is known as an argument. And oftentimes you will need more than one argument. So for example, for power, you could pass in 10 and you could raise it to the second power. In this situation, we would have two arguments, 10 and two. You may also hear the term parameter. We're gonna be talking about that in the next video. That is different than an argument but very similar concepts, so make sure you watch that one as well. Now, there might be some confusion on when you put a semicolon. Should you put a semicolon there? Well, it actually depends on the context and the type of function. So there are situations when you can just call the function, put a semicolon, you're good to go, and you're done. Most of the time, though, these functions are going to give an output. So if you remember back to my function machine I was talking about earlier, something that does something for us, we will have an input and we will have an output. The arguments are the input, pow is the machine, and the output is the return. So this is known as a return. If a function doesn't have a return, then it's probably doing something. It doesn't necessarily give us a value directly back. If that's a situation, you usually just call it and put a semicolon. More often than not though, you're going to want to grab that output so you're not just going to put it like this, plain and simple, you're going to assign that to something. So for example, we could assign that to some variable we declared earlier. So in most situations, yes, there's going to be a semicolon, but you are able to use this function inside of a larger expression. So 10 to the second power, 10 times 10 is 100. What if we wanted whatever this returned times two? In that situation, we would have something like this. We have the function call, no semicolon, we're not done. We multiply that by two. And this expression can be used inside of something else. But ultimately, we're going to need to finish with a semicolon at some point. So if we wanted to figure out what that value was, we could assign it to x, x is now gonna be 200. Or we could output that. So we could use C out to output this entire result. So basically what I'm trying to tell you guys is you can call a function by itself. That's usually when it has no return value. It just does something behind the scenes or it does some logging, does some console outputs for us, whatever it may be. When you don't use it inside of an expression, it usually doesn't have a return value. A lot of times though, it's going to give us an output or a return. 
In that scenario, you have to use it. So in this situation, we're multiplying it by two and assigning it to x. Whatever you decide to do with that value is totally up to you. Be creative, don't feel restricted, because if you think about it, this power function here, I think it returns a double, which is basically just a number with decimal values after. Anywhere you would expect to use a double, you can use this function call here. It's going to happen first, it's going to be replaced with the value 100, and then that is a double, works fine. Because of this capability, you'll often see pretty complex expressions. You'll have function calls as an argument for another function call, as an argument for another function call. Lots of nesting, lots going on. It's kind of hard to read. So if it's simpler for you just to take this, assign it to a variable, and then use it in an expression, that's totally fine. So if you didn't want to do it this way, what you could do is you could take power, put it up here by itself, assign that to something, and then you could just say x times two. However you guys want to do it. So that's how to use functions, very simple. Next video, we're going to talk a little bit about creating functions. Thank you guys.